Today, we're talking a little bit about multi-system inflammatory syndrome, and I'll be honest, I've never heard of it prior to this last week and a half. I had no clue what it is. Now, you see, this is a side effect of COVID in children, and I know it is scary sounding, and it can be. It can be. To help us learn more, we had pediatric critical care specialist, Dr. Michael Bigham on the line, and he's going to help us learn more. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. How long have you been a doctor at Akron Children's? Let's start I've been there. a pediatric ICU physician at Akron Children's for 13, almost 13 and a half years now. Oh, okay. So what is this condition, multi-system inflammatory syndrome? It, it, it might be abbreviated as MIS-C. That's correct. So multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, I'm going to call it MISC for efficiency's sake this morning. Um, MISC is essentially a robust inflammatory response that happens in the bodies and that usually is evidenced by uh, fever and other markers of inflammation like high white blood cell counts, sometimes uh, rashes or, or uh, uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. And so it's basically this: the body gets revved up with this robust inflammatory response, but it's in response to a COVID-19 infection. And so uh, that's usually not when you're in the throes of a COVID-19 infection, but it's usually several weeks after that COVID-19 infection. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, for the explanation there, because uh, I I wasn't at all sure what it was until it impacted a local family to me. And they were in, there was some organ failure. There was... Uh, it was just very, very scary scene. He was in ICU for nearly a week, and, and this was a young child. And I understand, um, you know, you can't go into specific cases. But how many cases of this have you seen lately? Well, it's actually interesting that this is, um, you know, hit your radar and gotten a little more uh, attention in uh, in the press of late. But in fact, uh, we started seeing MISC uh, in children very early on in the pandemic. And so let's rewind to a year or even a year and a half ago. Um, we weren't seeing as many children with symptoms of COVID-19. Most of the children that we saw sick in the hospital, and certainly those that were sick enough to be in our pediatric intensive care unit here at Akron Children's, were those kids who had MISC. Um, if we now fast forward to the last maybe six or eight weeks where we've seen this, another, this uh, more recent big spike in COVID-19 cases, more of the kids recently have been symptomatic with COVID-19. So we've seen kids in our ICU who've been quite sick with COVID-19 disease, uh, and we're only starting now to see um, some cases of MISC. And so it wouldn't be typical that we would see a spike in MISC cases at the same time that we see a spike in COVID cases, we would think that spike in MISC will trail those, um, those acute COVID, COVID cases by, by four weeks or so. So we may be, as we're um, sort of reached our you know, four or six weeks of this really high volume of COVID-19 cases in the community, uh, it might be reasonable to believe that over the next four to six weeks, we might see uh, more of these MISC cases, but we definitely saw more with some earlier spikes of COVID-19 earlier in the pandemic than we're seeing now. But that, to, to, to put numbers around it, a hospital is uh, the size of Akron Children's. Um, we, we uh, since the pandemic, have, have taken care of 75 or 100 kids uh, sick enough to be hospitalized with MISC. Wow. How, how, do you, how do you diagnose someone with MISC? Is it just the symptoms that they display or is there a test? Well, it's sort of a mix of both. Um, and so the symptoms um, would be what would prompt us to investigate a little bit further. And then there are some laboratory tests that might, uh, might confirm or support the diagnosis. And so um, essentially the, the, the sort of the case 
uh, definition, if you will, the constellation of things that 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 fit this MISC diagnosis are are are, are children, so kids less than 21 years of age who have a fever, and then they have uh, this laboratory evidence of inflammation, and usually that inflammation um, is severe enough to affect organs, and if it's more than two organs, that generally fits that MISC diagnosis. And so if we see kids that come in with fever and a rash and or low blood pressure and or nausea and vomiting, um, and that might prompt us to consider MISC as a diagnosis. And then, um, then we can do some laboratory tests that do two things. First, we'll test for uh, the SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID-19 infection, and then we can also test for antibodies in the body, which show there was a previous MISC infection. Um, and sometimes these kids also uh, maybe never were tested for COVID, maybe they never had any COVID symptoms, but maybe their mom or their dad or their brother or other people in their household all had COVID-19 three or four weeks ago. Um, and so um, if those antibodies are positive for COVID-19 or if there's still some residual evidence of COVID-19 infection, um, that might might support the diagnosis of those clinical symptoms of inflammation that I mentioned combined with the either history of being exposed to someone with COVID-19 or laboratory evidence of having a COVID-19 infection now or in the past. That would be sort of the constellation of things. And then there's a number of other inflammatory lab uh, tests that we can do, and each of those um, just sort of quantify how significant the inflammation is, and they just validate that the, um, the symptoms that we're seeing are really uh, generating a robust immune response, inflammatory response in the patient. And you said earlier in the call that since the beginning of the pandemic, you've seen anywhere between 75 to 100 cases at Akron Children's. Have you seen, out of those 75 to 100, are... A lot of them as of late, I, I know uh, COVID has uh, been impacting children um, a lot lately. So ha is this as of late that you've seen a rise in the numbers? Yeah, so I think um, I think it's a little too early to be able to to be certain about whether or not we're going to see as many MISC cases around this spike as we did around the early periods of the pandemic. But um, if we just put in a um, sort of in in two piles those kids who've had MISC in the last four weeks or so versus those kids who've had the MISC, you know, maybe in the first year of the pandemic, there are way more kids that had MISC earlier in the pandemic than are having MISC now. But it may be that we just aren't far enough out from this most recent COVID-19 spike, because as I mentioned, um, uh, these symptoms don't occur with the acute MISC infections. They tend to happen three, four, even five weeks after those COVID infections. And so that MISC is really a, 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 an inflammatory that syndrome that, that will lag this big spike in COVID-19 by four weeks. So right now we aren't seeing as many cases as we saw earlier on in the pandemic, but I don't know that that story's been fully written quite yet. Well, thank you, Dr. Bigham, for taking the time uh, to share this information and shine a light on what MISC is for those people who maybe they haven't had it or maybe right now their children are at home recovering from it. Like I said, there is one local family who I've been in contact with, and thankfully, thankfully, they were just discharged yesterday, and they didn't know how long they were going to be in the hospital for. Yes. Well, it's what's certain is these have been some of the sickest kids that we've taken care of in our intensive care unit. But fortunately, uh, the majority of them are able to recover back to their full health, which is, uh, which is our goal for every patient that we take care of here at Akron Children's. All right, doctor. Thank you for your time. Take care. Thank you. Goodbye.